It is a privilege and an honor to participate in this joyous occasion. To the members of the magnificent class of 2022, I congratulate you, I salute you, and I commend you on a job well done. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, and what a blessedness it has been to be a part of your educational journey. As I stand before you, I feel not just an unspeakable joy, but a profound gratitude to be in community with you. To celebrate not just your individual accomplishments and achievements, but also your collective gifts, your collective achievements. Achievements that extend beyond grade point averages, fellowships and awards, championship banners, and job placement rates. What you have given the university, the gift of grace, the gift of hope, and the gift of restoration in these trying times cannot be quantitatively measured, but will forever and ever and ever be remembered. When you arrived on grounds in August 2018, you were the calm after the storm. The darkness of the preceding month, the darkness of the preceding summer lingered over us. But your luminous spirit, your luminous presence provided a guiding light as we tended to our mutual woundedness and interdependence. First years, first years. You all were once first years. That descriptive in 2018 seemed so woefully inadequate in capturing what you truly represented. You were the university's new beginnings or what Gil Scott Heron might call the first minute of a new day. So forgive me in advance for departing from the traditional commencement address when the speaker tells you what you must do. Instead, I like to just revel in what you have done. The fruits of your labor bloom and blossom across this university. And because of your brilliance, resilience, and determination, this university stands. This university has remained a site of critical inquiry, knowledge production, scientific innovation, imaginative and life-sustaining art, medical advancement and healing, athletic excellence, and human transformation. For these and many other reasons, you have not only my respect, but my deep admiration. It is an admiration based on real human exchange and forged through our wondrous pursuit of knowledge and truth. Collectively, we have experienced the joy of discovery, the sheer delight of pushing the boundaries of existing knowledge, and the humbling recognition of how much we will never know. Interwoven with our quest for disciplinary expertise, professionalization, and you know, a good job, has been a collective reckoning with the urgency of our contemporary moment. For us, the classroom has been anything but a utopian oasis detached from the real life dramas of a democratic republic in deep crisis. Instead, the classroom has been a bold experiment in shared learning and critical exchange, a place where we confront the realities of the moment, but also imagine, to quote Toni Morrison, the world as it ought to be. Imagining and dreaming of a better world was not always easy. 
as we witnessed publicly coordinated attacks on the U.S. Capitol. State after state passed restrictive voting laws, rising levels of income and wealth inequality, a media ecosystem that freely circulates weapons of mass distortion, the rise of authoritarian regimes, declining public faith in the scientific authority of medical experts, and a global pandemic that has left millions dead. While navigating these challenges, we have grappled with deep philosophical and ethical questions that get at the heart of the human condition. How do you respond to unimaginable human suffering, loss, and rupture? How do you deal with uncertainty? How do you keep the faith amid human, ecological, and economic calamities? How does one survive in a sea of grief without drowning? If I turn inward and attempted to answer these questions, I would attribute my ability to keep on keeping on to a variety of things. Family and friends, faith, music, Grubhub. <laughs> and my work as a historian of the African American experience privilege with the opportunity to teach and research on the lone black movement towards justice, freedom, and truth. But somewhere in the equation would be you, my students, our students. Thank you for ensuring that the classroom remained a site of transformation and hope. Thank you for ensuring that UVA persisted as an academical village in not only name, but also practice. In our shared moments together, particularly after March 2020, I came to appreciate more deeply the power of your presence, the sacredness of the classroom, the worlds made and remade when two or more gather in the pursuit of knowledge, the magic created when we allow the world's greatest scholars, artists, scientists, and writers to transport us to another time and place. I also came to appreciate the beauty of an intense intellectual conversation when individuals with varying worldviews come together to understand the other person's perspective and the intellectual and spiritual and moral sources of that perspective. Thank you for never losing power, never losing faith, excuse me, in the power of ideas and human exchange. Despite balancing your multiple roles and responsibilities as students, as caregivers, and as workers. Of course, your contributions extended far beyond the classroom. With fearlessness and selflessness, you illuminated those moments when UVA fell short of not just greatness, but goodness. Moved by the political fervor of the times, you tackled a variety of issues. Rising tuition costs and student debt, campus policing, the university's relationship to the local community, the changing pattern of work, and the increased precarity and vulnerability of essential workers. In doing so, you all provided a model of democracy in action and reminded us that democratic renewal requires us to, us to subject our ideas, our beloved institutions, and even our most cherished traditions to scrutiny. Whether critiquing the historic landscape, calling for the renaming of buildings, or pushing to inscribe your own notions of justice and fairness in the honor code. You have sought to not only right perceived wrongs, but you have sought to recreate community. In her book, Our Declaration, a reading of the Declaration of Independence in Defense of Equality, political theorist Daniel Allen argues that, quote, the point of political equality is not merely to secure spaces free from domination, but also to engage all members of a community equally in the work of creating and constantly recreating that community. 52 years ago, 
President Edgar Shannon echoed similar sentiments to the graduating class of 1970. That spring semester had been marked by political upheaval. It was hotter than today. As students registered their critique with the ongoing war in Southeast Asia and the murder of four students at Kent State. Not content with simply challenging the war in Vietnam, student activists addressed larger issues facing the university, including its integration of women and African Americans into the student body politic and its commitment to improving the economic conditions of workers on grounds. Feeling the weight of weeks of intense student organizing, as well as facing fierce criticism from lawmakers in Richmond, President Shannon cautioned against tethering the college's vision of the future to old paradigms and formulations. We cannot return to the good old days, Shannon declared, nor should we want to. In looking to our future here within the University of Virginia, we must avoid, I think, too much use of slogans about the old university and the new university. Sloganeering is a poor substitute for hard thinking. Thank you, but that is, that's still Edgar Shannon. He's going to talk for one more sentence. We must continue to be a true university that provides freedom and opportunity. Freedom and opportunity, freedom and opportunity. Now, now it's me. Freedom and opportunity cannot thrive under the weight of orthodoxy, rigidity, and dogmatism. Mm -hmm. Growth, institutional and individual. Growth, institutional and individual requires regeneration and renewal. And this brings me to the only advice that I will provide on this sweltering hot day. Don't be afraid to depart from the script. The script, the one you write and the one others will attempt to write for you. Life is a series of promising starts, unexpected disruptions, dashed expectations, and beautiful surprises. Unexpected change and departures from the script have marked my adulthood. Upon graduating from high school, I left Jacksonville, Florida. It's always one. Yeah. It's always one from Duval. I left Jacksonville, Florida for Philadelphia, where I enrolled at Temple University and played on the women's basketball team from 1994 to 1997. Go Owls. Go Owls. Everything about the experience was transformative. And there are so many memories just seared in my mind. Walking down Philadelphia, and hearing the roots for the first time. Not the salad, but the band. <laughs> Traveling to Harlem with the poet Sonia Sanchez, who annually financed a day trip to the Schomburg Library for her students. Seeing Alan Iverson, the answer, play for the first time. And listening to one of basketball's greatest minds, John Chaney talk up matchup zone and how to cultivate a critical self. And then there were the heated debates about everything, from philosophy to hip hop to politics. So invigorating were the intellectual conversations within and beyond the classroom that my love for athletic competition faded tremendously. There was more to life, I thought, than 6 a.m. workouts, wind sprints, afternoon practices, wind sprints, and late night bus rides to and from arenas. So I revised the script and I graduated early. The decision was exhilarating and frightening. Sort of like giving a graduation speech before thousands of people. After my bridge year, which consisted of teaching math and science to middle schoolers, I enrolled in the PhD program in history at Notre Dame in the last year of my doctoral studies, I applied for a series of professorships at colleges and universities across the country. The decision to apply to UVA was very last minute. The application was due on December the 1st. I mailed it off on November the 30th. 
It seemed like a long shot. But to my surprise, I received an interview and eventually a job offer. After accepting the position, I received many notes of congratulation, but there was one note of warning. The University of Virginia, I was told, was a conservative place, steeped in tradition, the land of frats and floral dresses. And perhaps I should consider another university. In other words, I was not a good fit. Despite the warnings, I accepted the job because I needed a job. <laughs> and that decision remains one of the best decisions of my life. But the journey here has been anything but predictable. There have been roadblocks, unplanned exits, and unexpected detours. Of course, not all detours are bad. Some provide redirection from dangerous and hazardous routes. Some detours open us to new possibilities. That was the case with a detour that has become the center of my academic joy, Black Fire, a film series and a lecture course that explores the richness and the fullness of the black experience at the University of Virginia. Over the past decade, I've collaborated with my colleague, Kevin Everson of the Art Department, on a series of short films that combine historical research with, a cre with creative practice to highlight the rich tradition of political protest at the University of Virginia, to celebrate the women and men who build vibrant social and cultural institutions like Black Voices and the Black Student Alliance, and to also confront the hard truths many the, and, and also to confront the hard truths of the past and the present. I also teach a lecture course that explores many of the themes and topics in the film. It opens in the 1960s, focusing on how the civil rights movement transformed UVA, and it closes with the Unite the Right rallies of 2017. The topics are wide-ranging. We explore politics, sports, religion, Greek life, major trends in higher education, we talk about the corner. We talk about rugby road. It is the most self-centered class you could absolutely teach at UVA. But one important feature of the class is guest lectures from UVA alumni who share stories of the political battles won and lost and the vibrant social and cultural worlds they created. For the students, there is something deeply transformative about close contact with the people who shaped the landscape they are traversing. Because of their encounters with the past, students think more deeply about their own legacy and the institutional inheritance of the next generation. As the semester progresses, two questions emerge in conversations and assignments. How will I be remembered? How will we be remembered? And for what will we be remembered? Perhaps those questions have lingered in your thoughts over the past few days. It's only natural. Commencement invites both celebration and reflection. I've certainly done a lot of reflecting on your remarkable journey and how you responded to the unprecedented challenges without a blueprint and without a guide. Please know that I feel incredibly blessed to have lived and learned in your presence. Your sacrifice, your patience, your hard work, and your generosity serve as perfect reminders that transformative learning involves, to borrow from the historian Vincent Harding, not just the sharing of information, but the sharing of life. And that's what you've done here at the University of Virginia. You've not only pursued your dreams and aspirations, but you've shared your life. And for that, I am eternally grateful and the university is immensely better. Class of 2022, thank you for the gift of grace, the gift of restoration, the gift of fellowship, and on a more personal note, thank you for the gift of friendship. Congratulations on a job well done. Godspeed.